Good morning. Good morning. It is Friday. It's Friday, March 24th, 2023. Yes. So good morning. Good morning and welcome. It's going to be a great day. Good morning. Good morning. Yes. So as you are all coming in, I hope you have your coffee, right? Yes. A good cup of coffee, spending time with great people. Yes, so good morning. Good morning, Karen, and welcome. So glad to see you. Good morning, Donna. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Laurel. I hope you have a great day at work today. Good morning, Rob. The 800, and I know we should keep totally keep track like this. Welcome to episode 801. Good morning, Greg. Yes, it is episode 801. Good morning, Leanne. So glad to see you this morning. And Sandy, good morning from Kingston. Yes, good morning and happy Friday. Not only is it going to be a great day, it's going to be a great weekend. Yes, good morning, Paul and Sue. Good morning. Good morning, Velma. Look at y'all coming in. Oh, good. So this morning, as a total sidelight, I've been experimenting with eggs. And uh, I started adding cottage cheese to my eggs, my scrambled eggs. Quite lovely quite lovely. I quarter cup of cottage cheese, add it to your scrambled egg. So good. Good morning, Tanya. Um, scramble the, mix the egg, add the cottage cheese, scramble it. So lovely. So I went to uh, try turmeric in my poached egg this morning. I didn't have, well, I guess it's turmeric. I couldn't find my turmeric. So I'm going to have to go to the store today and get some turmeric just to try it in my poached egg. Eggs I've eaten in my entire life. It's time to experiment a little bit, right? Yes, add it before cooking it. So add the cottage cheese before cooking the scrambled egg. Put it and cook it on medium. There you go. You never know what's going to happen on Morning Devils, right? A wee bit of a recipe to start off. So, so good. Um, and cottage cheese has the same consistency as scrambled eggs. So it's a good way to increase your protein. Anyways. <laughs> and... I added salsa as well and avocado. So good. Good morning, Elizabeth, and good morning, Ken. It's so good to see you all. So this morning, as we have our coffee and as we're chatting, um, so I've given up scrolling through Facebook uh, for Lent. I check in the morning, I check in in the evening to see if there's anything I need to see, and but I'm like, no scrolling because it just leads to rabbit holes that I don't want to be in. Good morning, Kathleen. Anyway, so I've <laughs> I've reverted to reading the news, which I find some very interesting and sad things there. But last night, I was reading an article on the richest people in Canada, like the top 50, 51 richest people in Canada. And it started off with $1.6 billion. And I was like, wow. That's a lot of money, $1.6 billion. And it creeped up to $4.8 billion. $8.0 billion got up to $63.5 billion. Good morning, Penny. Um, and I just went, what? And then I'm like, Jen. What would she do with 60, 63 billion dollars? What would she do with 63 billion dollars? I just sat there going, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. And, uh, right? I'm just overwhelmed by the amount of money that 63 billion dollars is. And I immediately, uh, in my mind, after I'd gotten over the, the question itself of what would I do with $63 billion, um, I went to the pa parable of the talents, which is in Matthew chapter 25. And so as we read it, we're going to ask the Lord to, to bless this reading to our spirit. And the parable of the talents goes like this. It says, again... It will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents of money, to another two talents, and to another one talent, each according to his ability. 
Then he went on his journey. The man who had received the five talents went at once and put his five, uh, put his money to work and gained five more. So also the one who had two talents, he also gained two more. But the man who had received the one talent went off, dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received the five talents brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five talents. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with two talents also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two talents. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I'll put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who had received the one talent came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you are not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your talent in the ground. See, here's what belongs to you. His master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I do not sow and gather where I have not scattered. Well, then you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. Take the talent from him and give it to the one who has 10 talents for everyone who has will be given more and he who and he will have an abundance. Whoever does not have even what he has will be taken from him and throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Yikes. It was the master's choice to give five talents to one and two to another and one to another. And it said, according to his ability. And then the same rules applied to all of them. Go do something with it. Go do something with it. And sometimes it doesn't matter if we have $63 billion or if we have $63. The Lord simply says, what are you going to do with it? Are you going to honor me first? Whether it's 63 billion or 63,000. What's interesting is, is, is that you would think that with $63 billion or any, any amount of that high. Um, I read an article this morning that some of the richest people in America aren't even giving away 10%, which is what the Lord asks, right? So if they have $83 billion, you would think, they could give away $8.3 billion and they don't. Isn't that interesting? Because that's one of the things that God says first, in whatever you have, give me the, give me the first portion. Because it's not that I need it. It's not that God needs the first fruits of what he's given to us. It's we need to give it to him. Because it, it shows where our trust is at. If we, if we can give God the first fruits, like right off the top, the, the paycheck, the gift comes in and right off of the top, we honor God as first place in our life by giving him back the portion that he requires, which is only 10%. Then that shows what we value most. The way we spend our money shows what we value and it's tax season, right? And so the best way to see What's important in your life is to see what's on your tax return. And so the first thing that God says, no matter how much money we have, is will you, will you honor me first? Will you honor me first? Because it really shows what's in our heart. The second thing he says is like, will you spend it appropriately? Because you might honor God first. But then are you spending the, the last 90 appropriately? Like when um, you go to the store or when you buy things, like are you spending it appropriately? And that, that goes into the extravagant side and on the cheap side. Um, I read a story about a missionary who um, saved so much money and gave so much money to the poor that his own family didn't have proper clothes. And the Lord challenged him on it. He's like, no, 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 no. 
I gave you a family to look after. You need to make sure your family is clothed and well cared for. Because if they are lacking, then you are not spending your money wisely. And I was like, ooh, right? And it gets rid of that poverty mentality that's like, I have to save, I have to save, I have to save because I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, right? That's not what God wants either. He said, okay, put me first place. Give me the first fruits, the 10%. And then with the rest, like, take care of the things I've given you and take care of them well. Don't be chintzy. But don't be so extravagant that you're wasteful, right? So he wants us to be in that middle ground of being a good steward because he's a good dad and he wants to bless us. Um, so that's really challenged me a lot too. And like, cause I tend to be on the chintzy side because I'm like, yeah, but I won't have enough for later. And God's like, you don't need to worry about that. I'm going to give you more. I just want you to be a good steward of what I've given you today. And, and I have to admit, I struggle with that. I struggle with that. Um, I'm a saver. I like to save. I don't spend a lot of money. But more often than not, it's the mentality of, well, what if I don't have enough? And in that moment, the Lord challenges me. And he's like, do you not trust me as your dad to look after you? <sighs> do I put God first? Am I stewarding well the, the, the other 90%? And do I believe uh, what 2 Corinthians, I think it's 9, 8 says, and God is able to make all grace abound to you that, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Like God is able to make all grace abound to us. So he's going to give us everything that we need. So we don't need to worry, which goes back to Matthew 6, I think, which is what I talked about yesterday. Do not worry thinking, what will you eat or what will you drink or what will you wear? For your heavenly father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. And it doesn't matter if we have $63 billion dollars. It does feed a lot of children, but $63 can also feed a lot of children too, right? We just have to make sure that we put the money in the hands of God and let him do amazingly more than we could ever ask or imagine. And um, the thing is, just like the parable of the talents, God gives us according to our ability. God gives us according to our ability. So whatever it is that he's entrusted you to, his desire is that you would make the most of it. Whether it's 63 billion, 63 million, 63,000, 600 dollars and 30 cents, right? Are we being a good steward with the money that God has given to us? And it's not just money. It's our time, it's our emotions, it's our physical bodies. Are we being good stewards of those things too? One of the things that I've started praying for every day is Lord, that I would be a good steward of the things that you've entrusted to me. I just wanna be a good steward. I wanna be a good steward with my time. I wanna be a good steward with my physical self. I wanna be a good steward of my emotions too. I don't want my feelings to guide me. I want the truth of God to guide me. And all of these rules are the same. Everybody plays by the same rules. We just might have a little more to play with, but God's going to ask us the same questions. Did you put me first in all of those areas? Right? And then what did you do with, with what was left over? Did you honor me? Right? And did you trust me to provide for everything that you need? Because as Greg said, uh, the people with all the money, are they, are they happy, right? Or are they worried about having enough? Ooh, right? So it's not just because you have lots of money doesn't mean that you've stopped worrying about whether or not you have enough. I love that idea that God is able to make all grace abound to us so that in all things at all times having all that you need you will abound in every good work 
That's good news, right? So whatever it is that we come up against today, we can abound in every good work because God is able to make all grace abound to us. And so my prayer for us today is that we would be good stewards, good stewards of our finances so that there's enough to do everything that God has asked us to do. Because there is, if God has given you finances, then he's given you everything that you need. And our job is to be good stewards, putting him first, stewarding the middle, and giving what we can left over. So I want to be a good steward of my finances. I want to be a good steward of my physical self, my mental self, my emotional self, and my spiritual self too. Is the first thing I do when I get up in the morning. Do I talk to God? Do I spend time with him? It's a good steward of your time. All right, friends. Same rules apply to everyone. The same rules. And that's good news, right? It's good news. So it doesn't matter how much you have. It's what did you do with it? That's it. What did you do with it? Did you honor God? Did you spend wisely? And did you give what you could? <laughs> I know it's a wee bit challenging for seven in the morning. Let's pray. Lord, I am so glad that you were able to make all grace abound to us. All grace. All grace. I don't even know what that means. All grace. I just want to sit with that for a bit, Lord. That you are able to make all grace abound to us so that in all things, at all times, having all that we need, we can abound in every good work. Lord, that's good news. Would you help us? Would you help us to sit with that? That you have given us everything that we need to do what you have called us to do because you've given us yourself. And that's really all we need. And so, Lord, if, if we are complaining because we don't have enough, would you challenge us in that? If we're complaining because we're stingy, oh, Lord, Lord, if we're stingy people, would you remind us of how generous you are? Would you help us to be a God-honoring, generous people? Because that's what Jesus did. He honored you first and gave everything that he could. And so if Jesus has done it, then he's certainly going to help us do it too. This is good news. And so, Father, help us to take this truth today and walk with it, trusting you first. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Oh, that's good news today. It's good news. We all play by the same rules. And God's going to help us to play well. I love it. Honor God, spend wisely, give as much as you can. We all win. <laughs> go sit with the all grace. Second Corinthians 9, 8. Just go sit with it. Ask, say, Lord, teach me about all grace today. Teach me about it. And with this in mind, my dear friends, it's going to be a great, great day. Remember to like, share, go outside and help your community experience Christ. All right. Have a great weekend. Bye.